Okay, it's 2.10, so I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, yeah, the talk is called Guac AI Mole. Uh, so fun fact that the name of this project was actually from LLM, so it was a graphic, so it's AI is all the way down. Uh, so I'm Ridwan. I've been a software engineer at Microsoft for about two years. I work on Azure Container Registry. Lately, I've been working on CSSC, which is Container Software Secure Supply Chain. Uh, Sirtosh is the original author of this talk, but unfortunately couldn't make it today. So uh, yeah, that's why I'm here actually talking. He's awesome. You should definitely look at some of the projects he's been working on. So Sirtosh and I worked on an internal hackathon project last September, and that's the basis for this talk. So I included the slide because I wasn't sure how many folks knew what an SBOM was, but I think in retrospect, that's a little silly. And folks, you know, if you know what an SBOM is, raise your hand. Yeah, that's pretty much the entire room. So yeah, I won't get into it too much. I mean, executive order was pushed uh, in 2021 that mandated that uh, SBOMs be packaged with government software. So uh, you know, the idea is that supply chain is supposed to be improved by having SBOMs in place. And SBOMs are super useful. Um, I mean, if you take a look at them, there's a lot of valuable data in there. Uh, I'm not sure if it's visible, but you can see like the name of the package and the uh, version info, the licenses that come with it, so many different things. And there's even dependency relations in there, but it's really difficult to parse as a human. I mean, they're kind of meant to be machine readable, but I mean, if you look in an SBOM, it's, you're going to be scrolling back and forth to try and figure out what is actually going on in there. So, you know, SBOMs are a great thing to have, but it's not valuable on its own just to generate. So that's where Guac comes into play. And obviously you heard from Nathan just before me talk about Guac. So a few things, it's an open source project. It's uh, incubating in the OpenSSF uh, org right now. It is a queryable graph data model of your software supply chain. And so what that means is it takes software supply chain artifacts like the SBOM and translates it into vertices that represent software packages and relationships between those such as is dependency or certified vulnerability. So you can kind of have a whole graph of your supply chain. Uh, the API layer on top of it is GraphQL, so you can uh, use a GraphQL client to, to uh, query it, as well as they're uh, adding a new REST API endpoints to, to kind of query that so that you don't have to, to deal with the GraphQL yourself if you don't want to. Okay, so what was our hackathon project and what were the goals of it? So the first one is a natural language interface via LLM agents. Um, so we were newcomers to the project. We were not maintainers or anything, but we, we really saw the, the immense value of, of Guac. And so we wanted to say, okay, well, you know, I don't know this GraphQL schema uh, you know, and coming to it, but I know there's a lot of valuable data in there. So what if we could just use natural language questions to be able to query it, right? And so um, with, with LLMs rising, it just, it just made uh, you know, sense. So the next thing is that's kind of tangential to this, but you know, we, we're working on container registries. And so we wanted to be able to collect uh, SBOMs from an OCI registry using OCI refers. So OCI is the open container initiative and OCI refers is this uh, concept that was recently pushed in the OCI 1.1 spec, which allows you to relate different artifacts together and they're arbitrary artifacts. So you can have an SBOM that sits right next to the container image. And so that means that you just can pull those things together if you wanted to. And so we wanted to be able to actually uh, have the GUAC collection pull from the OCI registry using the Refers API. The last thing we wanted to do is to be able to join GUAC to data about container images running in a Kubernetes cluster. So right now there's no real concept of this. So we wanted to be able to say, have our LLM query a cluster to understand, okay, is there a vulnerable image running? Okay, so I have a demo. Um, I did not tempt the demo gods today, so it is recorded. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that play. Let's get started. We will run the make start service command in the guac repo, which will do a Docker compose up and get all the guac related services running locally, including the GraphQL server and a number of other things. Meanwhile, let's take a look at a script here called collect images, which will take each one of these and run the guac one collect image command. So let's get that started. And we can see here that we are doing a number of assemblies of packages and is dependencies, which are all guac predicates. So we're collecting all these different things. And let's actually take a closer look at the registry that we're collecting from. So we'll use the ORAS tool here. And so we can see that this 
is all the different images in this registry. And we can take a look at a particular one. And we can see here that this image has a SPDX plus JSON file attached to it. And so that's how we're collecting all these different things, these different SBOMs. So let's also look at this Kubernetes cluster I have running locally. And we can see here that there is a particular pod that's running here called VUL image. And when we describe this pod, it is running one of the images that we had in our registry. Great. So this is all done on the collection side. So we can hop over to our Streamlit app. And this is the front end for the LM agent that we're going to ask questions to. So you pop open this side pane here, you can see there's a number of parameters you can set, like an API key, an OpenAI endpoint, or something OpenAI compatible, and the model and GQ endpoint. So let's get started with asking this thing some questions. So the first one we'll start with is, what are dependencies of the Alpine image? So the agent executor chain is running here on the right hand side. We've just got a bunch of output. So the thought is to find the dependencies of the Alpine image, I need to use the GraphQL query provided in the example for querying dependencies of a given package, specifying Alpine as the package name and OCI as the package type. So it takes the thought and translates it into a GraphQL query and gets the result. And it says that the final answer is that these particular dependencies are of the Alpine image. Okay, so let's try something else. What images depend on the client Go package? So this is going the reverse direction. So we want to know what takes a dependency on client Go as opposed to what are the dependencies of something. So same thing here, it has a thought that it needs to use the dependency package field now instead of the package field. And it gets a response from the GraphQL server and it gives us an answer that these images are the ones that depend on client Go. Great. Let's try one with a vulnerability. So what package contains this vulnerability ID? It's thinking. So in this case, it knows to use the certify vuln query. So it does so. And use that vulnerability ID in the correct place and it grabs a response. And this is log4j. So the infamous log4j, as everyone knows. Let's see if we have any running images that contain this particular vulnerability. So this is a little bit more complex. It needs to first identify the packages that have this vulnerability using the GraphQL database, then check if any of these packages are included in the running images on the system using the terminal tool. So first it does the certify vuln query and it grabs the package, which is log4j. Now it's going to check to see, okay, what are all the packages that depend on log4j that are of type OCI? It's because we wanna make sure that it's an image that gets returned and it finds that it's the vol image, the one that we were looking at earlier. And so then it goes to see, okay, let's do the kubectl get pods output and see if anything's running. And the final answer is that the running image has the, uh, the running image that has the vulnerability is quack AI MLA vol image. Sweet.
Okay, so that was the demo. Um, I'm pretty much at time, but next steps, the project is not pr production ready. So we, it's kind of really a proof of concept at this point, but if you think it's useful, we'd love to get your feedback on the repo. And then there's a two GitHub issues. Uh, one is is deployed that basically would be co-locating co the data about where a particular package is deployed instead of doing the kubectl commands. Okay, thanks so much.